Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about divide and conquer. So let's get into it. So basically all we're going to cover in this video is a story from work because I had a very interesting discussion with a developer coworker of mine who she was struggling a little bit with a fairly tricky uh, tricky issue that she was in charge of and so we had a sit down and we talked and I think that we I think that she understood a little bit better at least from 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 my perspective how to solve this issue so let's back it up a little bit and let's look at some code so I have this product here it's just an express server together with a basic react application that is structured like this where we have a application that all it really does is that it shows a dialogue. So if I go and I start up all of this stuff, which I should have done before I started recording, I now noticed, but hey, that's me. NPM start, go into the divide and conquer NPM run CSS. And then doc go into divide and conquer npm run webpack. So let's do that. And let's say localhost 3000. And here is my amazing application. If I click open, it shows this dialog bar. And that is the whole story. That's all it is. It just shows a dialog. Now this is just a demo representation of a feature that she was dealing with where basically her problem was that she was in charge of a page that had an entry point to multiple other feature flows. Now what that basically means is that there was a button on that page. When that button was clicked, a dialog should be shown. Now depending on what the state of the application was. In other words, what features were on in the system, different dialogues should be shown. Now she had had a major issue with this because the requirements kept on changing and she was it was a very error prone feature where often any change that happened led to an unexpected behavior like the this logic for when the dialogue should be shown, which dialogue should be shown and all of this associated complexity was a big hassle for her to deal with. Now the original function that made the decision of if you look at we look at this code here this show dialog function if we go into that this was a similar sort of function it was a lot more complicated i'm just trying to for learning purposes trying to keep it as simple as possible so you had a bunch of parameters that usually was a bit a bunch of boolean switches if one dialog was on or if it was off etc etc right but it also had other complexities such as oh if the day is one or it's Tuesday basically, well, all right, then that's one condition. And then you had other conditions such as, oh, is the user this type of user or is uh, like uh, is this feature on? And if this feature is on, but this feature is off, then there's another sort of behavior. So this function was extremely complicated. And all it really did was to figure out which dialogue to show. and. As, I was, as she was explaining it to me, she was saying, I have this problem, Frederick. Like, I, it's, uh, it's so easy, like it's so hard to figure out this logic and understand what the requirement is and when I should show one dialogue and when I should show another one. And I said, yeah, that is a very tricky problem. It's, a, it's almost an impossible problem to solve. And she says, but the shorter, there has to be some way for me to, to like make this clean and nice and simple. I just don't get how to do it. And I said, there is, something we can do it's not gonna make the complexity go all the, go away all that much but it will probably help you create a situation where at least you have fewer errors and so i'm gonna walk you through the things that i spoke to her about so what is divide and conquer well I will for, be forced to, before we can understand that concept within this context i think that i, I need to explain what i call inherent complexity versus circumstantial complexity. Now, inherent complexity is the idea that there is a certain amount of complexity to any problem that you're facing. My favorite analogy is 
If you have three pairs of shoes and you need to sort them, well, that's a very easy problem because you can just look at those three shoes and just put them in the right order. If you have a flight hanger of millions of millions and millions of shoes, then the problem is much bigger. It's a much harder problem. And unless you find a way to become a superhuman, or you have some tool or something that makes it super easy to automatically just sort those shoes, then that then the problem is what the problem is. You can't simplify that problem. If you're going to have to sort shoes by hand, and there's millions of them, that's going to take a lot of time. It's never going to go as quick if, as if you had three. So that's complexity we can't do anything about. And the other one is circumstantial complexity. It is complexity that we have self-imposed on ourselves. And if you look at this function, this is one part circumstantial complexity because there is complexity here that we don't have to deal with at this stage. And there's also inherent complexity, stuff that we can't change because it's part of the problem. So let's go to version two here. So the first thing I suggested to you was to do this. So when you have a very complicated function, like I, like I like to call them a decision-making function, it's usually a function that has a complicated underlying logic such as should a feature be on or off? This is a complicated function because it needs to have an understanding of a big state of information in order to answer that question. The first thing to do, I suggest to her, is to move all of the properties into an object because this makes it very easy for you to like not to get into this horrible mess where you might have sometimes there I mean if there's going to be optional values here in the future that might be even more complicated uh, par parameters that are they're going to be there they're not going to be there you could have 50 I mean I've seen functions like this that have 15 parameters so in order to just simplify the cognitive load, because that's the thing that she was really after. She wanted to make it mentally easier for her to make sure that this was always working. So do the first thing. Just abstract away the parameters to start off with because they're not important. At least at this stage, it's not important which, you know, which parameters you have. That's the first thing. So this is an improvement, right? Just immediately you get a little bit less information to deal with. And that's one level of complexity just sliced out from you. And if you think about it, the only thing you really care about, you don't care if there's a million properties on this object anywhere in the code, you really only care about these properties. That's it. So you don't have to declare them. There could be millions of things on this thing, but you just care about this because this is your specification. Right, so that's one iteration of this. But we can do better. So let's try to simplify this even further. So one thing that we were she, we were struggling with here was that, okay, you have some type of dynamic value, such as time. Time is a horrible thing because it's always moving. So I suggested to her, well, if you externalize the time variable here and you just treat everything as just a configuration that you pass in, then you put it on the responsibility of the caller to actually dictate what the time is. Now, this is useful from many perspectives. One part is that this makes this function that is like the, the hotspot of all of this feature into, it makes it simpler, but it also makes it more testable because time is horrible to test for because if you have it internal like this, then your testing code needs to know what the time is or set the clock or things like that. It becomes very tricky, but if you put it outside of the function, it makes it much, much simpler. So by just passing in the day as a number, we can make this one level simpler. And now this is an even dumber function. It's a perfect function in, in a sense because the only thing it needs, th th this is as far down in the uh, circumstantial complexity we can basically make this. There's no way for us to simplify this even further, at least from my perspective, because the requirements are that if the day is one and the show bass dialog is, is on, then this thing is going to be returned. This is basically just a factory function. And the, 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 this is as slim down as we can make it. So when I showed this to her, she, she kind of tell, told me that, yeah, this makes sense to me because now it's very easy for me to understand what's going on in this function here. I can't simplify this problem even further, but at least I have isolated the complexity. And she goes, yeah, and, and this is this makes sense to me. This is as low as low complexity as I can make it. And I go, yes, sort of. But there is actually one more thing that we can do that makes can make this even simpler. And what do I mean by that? And then I showed her the last iteration. And this is the last iteration. 
where now we pretty much have the same function here, but we have abstracted away this tiny little piece of logic right here into a separate function. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important not in this scenario because this may feel to you as a very simple turn, like it's a very simple comparison. It's, it's a very easy condition to look for and understand what's going on here. But this thing here has the potential of being much more complicated. It might actually grow into a concatenated horror show of many different conditions that we're checking at the same time. And the, the, it has the possibility of actually creating even more cognitive load if you have a function that goes even more complex with a lot of ifing and anding and elsing and all of this good stuff, right? But if we do this, if we just wrap that logic in a separate function that will provide this wrapping function with the answer to the question, should the food dialog be shown, we have made this even simpler. Now, all this function knows is that if this is true, I'm going to return that. If this is true, I'm going to return that, etc., etc. There's now no way to make the, okay, the, the, this is pretty much as simple as we can make the actual logic of this function. And then I told her, now the only thing that this function really needs to be tested for is that if everything is on or everything is off, what will happen? And that is something that I told her, go to your stakeholder, go to your product owner and tell him that I need you to give me a document that very clearly states what the order of precedency is here. I should know that this foo function should, if everything is on, this should always be the first thing that is shown. And if that's off, then the next thing should be that and be the bar function or the bar dialog and then the bass dialog. And then there's no under, it's going to be undefined. If nothing is on, then there should be no dialog. This should be part of your requirement. And adding a comment like this is very, very useful. It makes it very simple for me as the, the person who's going to maintain this to go, oh, this is how the function is working. This is the document that states how it should, uh, how the order precedency should look. Good. If this document is updated and this is no longer consistent, then I need to update this. But this is the source of truth. This is the thing that dictates what the order of precedency should be. And then I created this separate function here, which is very powerful because now I can isolate the logic that decides when the foo dialog should be shown from the logic of what dialog should be shown. So when I have my, sh my test here, I can create a sequence of tests here where all I do is that I take a properties object and I can just simulate all of these log all of this logic. I don't have any inherent complexity or anything like a dynamic value such as the day. And I can just write a very simple test that, ret that takes a snapshot and tells me that, oh yeah, if everything is on, then the foo dialog should be the thing that is shown. If, if that's off and everything else is on, well, then it's going to be the bar dialog. And if everything, you know, you kind of just go through the hierarchy here until you go to all the way down to undefined and then hey, it's good, it should be undefined. And in the scope of this test or from this function's perspective, everything is now covered. I don't have to think much more about this complexity of this function. And for the show foo dialog, I can actually go granular and I can really go into and dig deep into the logic surrounding this question. When should the foo dialog be shown? This is the divide and conquer ID. I have separated the, the complexity of when the foo dialog should be shown from the show dialog function. The show dialog function is now just very, it's a very, it's a much dumber function, which is a perfect thing because this means that it's easier to change this function with confidence and it's easier to test this function because I don't have to cover all of the inter internal complexity of which dialog should be shown in the same function. I have extracted out that in a separate thing and now I can really go in and heavy here and really test every single thing that is related to the question, should the food dialog be on and off? And I don't have to check the other complex, uh, the other dialogues either, because it doesn't matter from the perspective of this test, all it wants to know, or all it's checking is, when is the show food dialog going to return true? And when is it gonna return false? That's all it cares about. It's not its job to know what all the other complexity is all about and when the other dialogues should be shown. It's just concerned with my specific dialogue. 
I hope that, that I know that this might be complicated, but what I want you to take away from this is basically the idea that if you have a problem that is fairly complex, such as this, such as my coworker, she had this problem where she doesn't own all the different dialogues and all this stuff. So her, her primary desire is to create a very simple workflow, a piece of logic that is so simple that it works 100% of the time and anybody can, because there are other people own, uh, that own all of these dialogues. If she can create a function that where they can change that function with confidence and never break any of the other existing features, she is not going to have to deal with this all the time, which was the case. That, that's why she came to me because she had all these regressions all the time where someone changed something and because the function was so complicated, it just created this big mess. So by just walking through the complexity levels and trying to divide out the logic that makes up all of this complexity into inherent complexity and circumstantial complexity, we could actually go all the way down to break it down to a function that was so simple that anybody who wanted to add a new dialogue, all they needed to know is what is the expected order of precedency and then add a one liner. That was it. And then add more properties or whatever they needed in order if they had more a more complex thing than just a Boolean value such as this, they just added a function that answers the question, when should this thing be returned? This made it extremely easy to update this function without ever breaking anything. And it made it very easy to write effective unit tests that answers the question, when should I show this dialogue? I hope this makes sense to you. Have a great day.